Shall we get my next guest out, ladies and gentlemen? He is, and I feel safe in saying this, he is Scotland's second biggest boil. It is Fubo himself. Please welcome Frankie Boyle. Great to finally have you on the show. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, thought you'd have pushed the boat out a bit more with what? Puff Daddy being on the show. Well, it's not We're Puff Daddy anymore, he's Diddy. Well, Diddy sat back there yeah. in the green room and we've got a big bowl of miniature heroes. <laughs> I'm saying, uh, what are we bound to, Puff Daddy? <laughs> Well, I don't know if you know this, but we're in the middle of a recession, thank you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're setting the tone. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm holding back on the sweets for the future. Uh, let me just clear something up, though. I mentioned uh, you being Fubo, I said. Frankie Boyle. But you're not actually, you're not related to Susan Boyle, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. I read Frankie's book. I got it last year for Christmas. It was a brilliant, funny, funny book, but there's some photographs in it which are just as funny. Here's a picture of Frankie as a boy. You tell me if you don't think this could have grown up to be Susan Boyle. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, we do have a lot in common. Uh -huh. I also look ridiculous dressed as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I mean, I find the whole thing of people getting fascinated with talent shows just... Do you not find that depressing? That's well, what our grandparents used to watch. I know, you like... know, I quite watch some of them. I don't watch them anymore so much, but I did watch when they first started with the, with the X Factor and all that. I quite liked it. But now I do feel like it, it's... It is like people are just laughing at people they shouldn't be laughing at in the early <laughs> stages. You know? Oh, that's the bit you like, I see. <laughs> yeah, but the idea of people being judged by Amanda Holden? Mm. <laughs> a woman with a face like haunted Tupperware? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, can, well, you watch, can, you watch, can you watch Andrew Lloyd Webber? He looks like he's had his face carved off by a diseased butcher, <laughs> put in a piñata, beaten with hockey sticks for six hours, and then the resulting slop piped back onto his head <laughs> like the icing on the ugliest cake the world has ever seen. Oh. Are you on his Christmas card list? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love Andrew Lloyd Webber, though. I find him charming and I think he's sweet on TV because he's, uh, he's, he's not putting himself forward as uh, a heartthrob. He, he would be charming in a fairy story <laughs> as someone trying to steal a baby <laughs> from a princess. <laughs> on reality? This is reality? That's horror? <laughs> OK, well, speaking of uh, fairy stories, uh, you have uh, little children now. How many kids have you got, Frankie? Because you read uh, them, I guess. I've got two little kids. Two little... Are they both girls? No, no, I've got a girl and a boy, so I have a lot of sleepless nights. How old are they? Lying awake wishing I'd finished on their mum's tits. <laughs> <laughs> the, girl's, the girl's nearly six and the boy's nearly two. OK. Oh, no, the boy's nearly three, the boy's two. OK. Well, they're lovely ages, six and three, that's the lovely yeah, age. Until they get fantastic. up to about 11, 12, 13, I think they're, they're still... <laughs> <laughs> well, they're still lovely babies, you know what I mean? And you can, uh, you, you can go where you want at the weekend, you say, come on, kids, we're going in, you don't, they can't say to you, no, we're not, you know, you, I hope you enjoy that period. I, I, I'm enjoying it, but it's just been on tour as well. So, like, I phoned home the other day and my, my wee boy was crying, going, I've lost my daddy. <laughs> I've been on tour for, like, three months. Are you I'm... sure the mum didn't tell him who the real father was? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think in many ways it's, it's a good time now to fake my own death and cut him loose forever. <laughs> Are you, I love the title of Frankie's tour. First of all, the title of his book. I don't know if you... Uh, did, how many people got Frankie's book? Did, did any of you read Frankie's book yet? Yeah. OK, we might... Uh, two people. Uh, we might have some, <laughs> but after this, hopefully a lot more. I really laughed. I mean, I really laughed. And, and I read a lot of kind of books that people I know have written or people who are famous and I'm going to interview them. But I really, I really made me laugh out loud. Thanks, what was man. the title? Even the title I love. What was the title of it again? It was called My Shit Life So Far. <laughs> <laughs> There's an honesty in that. Yeah. Uh, and then the title of the tour I love as well, the new tour, which is... Uh... There's an honesty in that as well, which is, I would happily punch every one of you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you don't actually feel that way about your, your fans, do you? No, if I could, I'd, I'd run them all over with a truck. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not... They're all, no, they're, they're all right. They're good crowds, like. They're good crowds, but, but ugly. 
Okay. <laughs> so you, you attract an ugly audience, you think? I think my ugliness attracts an ugly audience. I don't Did think you're an ugly man. <laughs> I, I didn't much say you were an attractive man, but I, I think you're in that exact middle zone between the two. But the audience, I mean, the audience looked like Jim Henson's workshop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like putting out a public service announcement at the start of the show saying, in the event of a fire, you will all end up better looking. <laughs> You yourself recently looked very differently, I noticed. You looked very... You had uh, quite a large beard. For well, a young beard. person in show business, that was an unusual thing. I thought maybe you were acting and you'd taken a role in perhaps Shakespeare or something. It was, a, <laughs> it was like a period beard. No, I, I thought it made me look like a prophet, but a lot of other people felt it made me look like someone who should be on some kind of register. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess with the glasses, it kind yeah, of... Yeah, the uh... glasses together, so any time you go by a children's playground, all the mums snatch their kids out of the sand pit <laughs> and start throwing their shoes at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me ask you about Mock the Week. What happened there, Mock the Week? is a big, successful TV show uh, here on BBC, and, I'll, you know, some very funny people on it, but you were always one of my favourites on it. Thanks, was, uh, and, then, and then you walked. Was that over the flack you got over some of the jokes? Was that why you left? No, I think there was like, they were get, definitely getting to the point where they fought to get jokes on every week and obviously I had to fight to get the stuff I said on every week. And it was getting to the stage where they were sort of, you got the feeling losing some of those arguments. And I thought I'd rather go before I'm doing sort of twee material about, wouldn't it be funny if you tickled a badger? So they were, <laughs> I've got a laugh though. But so you were, <laughs> they were clamping down a little bit on the, uh, on the edgy material, if we use that. Yeah, they stopped me doing the stand up and stuff. And I thought, well, that's a good point. At, to, to sort of leave it at. And then on the last episode that I was supposed to do, I thought I'd had a heart attack. <laughs> so there was, a, there was an ambulance on standby for a stunt they were doing on Blue Peter. So I got whisked off to hospital in an so ambulance. So during the show, you thought you'd had a heart attack? Just before the show started. And uh, they had to get the warm-up guy in to do my bit. I got taken off in an ambulance, and it turned out that I actually had what they described as a torn man boob. A torn man boob? <laughs> Is, which is quite a tragic thing to hear a senior cardiologist take time out of his day <laughs> to angrily tell you you have the Torin man boob. <laughs> he didn't even use whatever the proper scientific term is. He wanted to really humiliate you by referring to your breasts <laughs> as man boobs. Yeah. Your chest area. Yeah. Uh, what, how, do you, how do you tear a man boob? How do you do that? What were you doing that you tore your man boob? I'd been, I'd been doing push-ups. Uh, after, after watching the film Bronson, which is a great film, <laughs> I decided I would get myself into prison shape. <laughs> and I'd actually tore and what you one actually of my did was tits. You tore a man tit <laughs> and were taken <laughs> off in the Blue Peter Ambulance. Yes. <laughs> that was far from being Just Bronson, a, the yeah. caged beast, as it's possible to be. It was about as humiliating as it could have possibly been, without being airlifted out on a stretcher while they played the theme tune from MASH. <laughs> and my face got dragged against the studio window. <laughs> Uh, so, you walked for Mock the Week. Yeah. Are you doing uh, anything else like that? Are you going to do another panel show? Are you gonna... No, no, I'm doing a show that's uh, sort of stand-up and sketches uh, called Tramadol Nights. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know Tramadol. It's, the... it, is it a, it's like a lithium type thing, isn't it's it? It's like a heavy morphine-based painkiller, <laughs> which my writing partner took for two weeks and lived in his house in his pants, thinking that his ex-wife still lived with him. <laughs> so we decided that would be a good sort of motto so for hold the it. show. Was this a prescribed drug or had he found it on the street? I feel he had self-prescribed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the details, but yeah, he, he rarely goes through the formal channels. <laughs> <laughs> so, your writing partner, yep. a heavily self-medicated individual <laughs> with a series of broken relationships behind him, yep. and you have sat down to do, no doubt, a cheery family sketch show. It's pretty horrendous. Yeah, <laughs> catch it first time, cos it ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I... I <laughs> I almost hesitate to ask, but I heard there was another title for the series at one stage. Yeah, it was originally called Deal With This Retards. <laughs> and for some reason, they just felt... I don't know, maybe advertisers or something would get put off. <laughs> deal, deal With This, it sounds very pushy, doesn't it? Yeah, well, Deal With This initially sounds like it could be like, you know, like there'd be a banker involved in No Elements. Oh, not him. <laughs> God, he horrifies me more than Lloyd Webber. His, his skin! <laughs> It's like if your balls had a kneecap. <laughs> Why it's exactly like if your balls had a kneecap. <laughs> if, I, if I wanted to sit around watching people open empty boxes all day, I'd spend Christmas morning at Kerry Katona's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. 
uh, now, is this true, Frankie? I've heard that you're going to give up stand-up, that you're going to give yes. up stand-up touring. Now, what? Now, this sounds ridiculous because it's A, your job is what you, you do, and also you do it well and you have a big fan base. I would have thought that you'd, you'd want to keep doing it. It's very unusual someone uh, gives up something like that. Uh, it's unusual, but I think it's also that thing of stand-up's a bit unhealthy in a way. Do you know what I mean? You're sort of looking for the love of strangers <laughs> every <laughs> night, <laughs> the approval of strangers, which is very nice. I'm very glad that they come and all that stuff, but, you know, I've got friends. I've got a family. <laughs> I'd like to... You don't you know, have to... It's not, that's not the only reason you're going out in front of them. You're not going, love me, love me. You're going out because you can make people laugh and you have a skewed but very funny way of looking at the world. Aye, but I'd like to just do it, like, when I can concentrate on it and do it very well and, and then stop before I sort of... You know that thing when you get past 40 and you start doing routines about... I've heard ..your about nasal it. hair or... <laughs> 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 I just... I thought I'd, I'd just try and do it all well and then go. So you might... Out. But you might come back then, I guess, if you... If you if you t you're going to take some time off or is your intention not to return to I don't think I would do stand-up again. If the Channel 4 series came back, that's got stand-up in it, so I would yeah. do stand-up for that, but... Other than that, this, this tour is pretty much the end of it. You look a bit like, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but you look a bit like your ears have been put on upside down. Because the <laughs> bit at the bottom is quite fat. And the I was, bit was, yeah, I was actually born with what's called bat ears. Really? So I was born with ears that just came out like this. Oh, like the big, big yeah, ears? Like prop. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a thoughtful <laughs> way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, that's a thoughtful way of well, describing a genetic deformity. <laughs> well, bat know. ears sounds like, a, it sounds like something you would say <laughs> to someone to upset them. You've got yeah, bat well, ears. Yeah, that's what it used bat to be ears. called. But, uh, Basically, I got the whole sort of ears constructed, but what? it was it was basically this surgeon did it on the sly. He literally did it in his spare time. So he was time. like a backstreet ear he surgeon. Did, well, he was a good <laughs> surgeon, but like literally like one of my school teachers when I was a wee boy knew him, and he was supposed to do these bits and sort of tuck them in and stuff, but he died. <laughs> 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 he died before he could finish the ears. So was there only just... one ear surgeon in the Gorbals? <laughs> There was none. I had to go somewhere else. So, so you're half finished. I'm half, half, half finished deals. Well, um, <laughs> well, would you like if you don't? Look, I've done a lot of work with Comic Relief. I'm sure I could get some money out of them to get them finished for you. If you want. We could have a whip yeah. round right now have, if you want. Have Billy Conley do an appeal for me? That would be fantastic. <laughs> get... Look at his terrible ears. <laughs> <laughs> This child was having an ear operation and the surgeon died halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> I might say it, thank you. That's uh, well done. Uh, it's really great to have you on the show, finally. Uh, I think you're a, a tremendously gifted comedian. Thanks, man. Thanks yeah, for having me. And I hope you keep doing it. But if you don't, who cares, really? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, there's plenty more out there. You know what I'm talking about. Thanks, man. Thank you, Boyle, ladies and gentlemen. Ask me by name.